Credit card delinquencies surged in 2023, indicating financial stress, New York Fed says. And this is something we can actually see for ourselves. Between uh, 2001 and 2023, we can see that the credit card delinquency rate, this is the delinquency rate on all credit card loans, uh, including all commercial banks, so not just the big ones like Chase, Visa, MasterCard, so on and so forth, but also the small local ones as well, because they have to report their data too. And we can see that there's been a very concerning and pretty significant upward trend, basically from a one 0.5% to 3.1%, just over doubling. And that is pretty concerning. Um, credit card delinquencies have surged more than 50% in 2023 as total consumer debt swelled to $17.5 trillion, the New York Federal Reserve reported on Tuesday. Debt that has transitioned to, quote, serious delinquency or 90 days or more past due increased across multiple categories during the year, but none more so than credit cards. With a total of $1.13 trillion, trillion dollars in debt. Credit card debt that has moved into serious delinquency amounted to 6.4% in the fourth quarter, a 59% jump from just over 4% at the end of 2022, the New York Fed reported. The quarterly increase at an annualized pace was around 8.5%, New York Fed researchers said. And this is bad for the people that are in debt, for the credit card companies themselves, and also potentially for small businesses because of the downstream effects that this is going to have. Obviously, it's pretty easy to see why this is bad for people. Financial issues like this will lead to a cycle of debt where all you're doing is paying down interest over and over. And that obviously leads to a lot of struggles, stress. It can increase uh, risks of things like heart attack and heart disease because of how bad stress is for your body. It can also do things like cause divorces. You can be financially crippled and money is actually the number one cause for divorces and breakups so on and so forth. Debt, when it's bad and out of control like this, is really horrible for people's lives emotionally and physically. And you can imagine why it's bad for the companies, because when people default, the companies are no longer making the money that they thought they would. So they're going to try and make up for it elsewhere. And this will probably be by doing things like increasing interest rates on everybody else who has credit card debt, or increasing fees to actually transfer money between uh, people and small businesses, which will make the small businesses make less money because they're being charged more for the financial services of credit card companies. And small businesses making less money is just bad for them, their employees, and the economy in general because small businesses make up something like 55% of the total amount of people employed. It's important to understand that profits with these credit card companies are a zero-sum game. That means if they're losing money somewhere with people going delinquent and being unable to pay, they're going to make up for it somewhere else. And a lot of people are going to say, well, that's stupid. They don't have to make up that money somewhere else, but they believe that they do. And so so they are going to. Whether or not you like that is kind of irrelevant. That is going to be what happens. Now, as bad as this spike that we see is, it is important to put it in context. And in context, since 2009, the rate of credit card delinquency has actually dropped pretty significantly. And I can put this through the most recent data we have, but 2009 to uh, 2021, it went down basically to a third of what it was before. And only in the past a uh, few couple of years have we seen this uh, spike that is being talked about here in this article. And this dip here is actually not that surprising. A lot of economists predicted that this was going to happen because the government was sending so out so much money in stimulus checks that people who had not been able to pay their credit card debt were finally able to do so, possibly for the first time in years. So we expect to see the amount of delinquency go down as people just straight up had more money in their pockets and in their bank accounts to be able to come current with these kinds of things. And in Initially, this rise after this dip was also predicted by economists because once the stimulus checks stopped, we expect people to no longer be able to pay down their credit card debt like they were in the past. And this was pretty well predicted here by S&P Global. It says credit card delinquency net loss rates returned to pre-pandemic levels, basically saying we expected it to go down when there was more money being pumped into the economy by the government, and then we expect it to go back up after that. Credit card delinquency rates on net loss rates and on average returned to pre-pandemic levels for the six major U.S. credit card issuers in the first month of 2024 as pandemic stimulus payments waned and economic activity normalized. And so the belief was that it would go back to where it was before, and then it would kind of hover there, probably somewhere oh around the 2.5%, which is where it had been for the past decade or so prior. Except, as you can tell, 
it's gone notably past that. It's up to 3.1%, which is the highest it's been since uh, basically 2011. And that is actually pretty concerning. But it is actually worse than that. Delinquency rates are rising, but so is the total amount of credit card debt. As you can see here, um, Americans owe a record $1.1 trillion in credit card debt, straining budgets. U.S. households are carrying a record amount of credit card debt, according to the new Federal Reserve Bank of New York report released Tuesday. The bank said that the data indicates financial distress is on the rise, particularly among younger and lower income Americans. Total household debt grew by $212 billion, rising to $17.5 trillion in the fourth quarter of 2023, the Fed's quarterly report on household debt crisis shows. Credit card balances rose by $50 billion to hit a record $1.13 trillion. Inflation and higher interest rates are contributing to rising credit card debt, resulting in more Americans struggling to pay down their credit card balances. We're seeing more and more people carrying more debt for longer periods of time, Rossman said in an emailed statement. For example, 49% of credit card holders carry debt from month to month, up from 39% in 2021. And that is a huge increase from 39% in 2021 to 49% today. That is a lot more people that are carrying huge amounts of uh, debt from month to month. And those interest rates on credit cards are not particularly low. So, I mean, debt is risk and it can ruin your life. And so rising debt equals rising risk. There's more of a chance for you to default and be absolutely financially ruined about it. Now I'm hesitant to say that this is a bubble, but I am not hesitant to say that it is very concerning. Even so-called good debt is on the rise, as you can see here. Um, this is the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, so it was the company that put out the report. Excuse me, not company, organization. Uh, and as you can see, the total debt balance is going up by a lot. All debt, including mortgages, HELOCs, student loans, everything that you have, buy now, pay later, every debt that exists is increasing pretty significantly. Mortgage balances shown on consumer credit reports increased by $112 billion during the fourth quarter of 2023 and stood at $12.5 trillion at the end of December. Balances on home equity lines of credit, HELOCs increased by $11 billion, the seventh consecutive quarter increase after uh, Q1 of 2021, and there is now $360 billion in aggregate outstanding balances. Then talks about credit cards, which we've talked about, Auto loan balances increased by $12 billion, continuing the upward trajectory that has been in place since Q2 of 2022 and now stand at $1.61 trillion. Other balances, which include retail credit cards and other consumer loans, grew by $25 billion. Student loan balances were effectively flat with $2 billion increase and stand at $1.6 trillion. In total, non-housing balances grew by $89 billion dollars. And absolutely, that is huge. Now, I just said debt is risk, and it absolutely is. But debt can be fine if you're reasonably able to pay it, except a lot of people are not reasonably able to afford it. The total amount of debt from uh, Q1 of 2014 was uh, $2.96 trillion. And from there to mo the most recent numbers we have of Q4 2023, uh, where it's at $4.89 trillion, that is a 65% increase in the total amount of debt. During that same time frame, we can see here uh, Q1 of 2014, we've got $24.32 coming to today where we're sitting at about uh, $34. That is only a 42% increase. So total debt has increased by 65% and average hourly earnings of all employees in the private sector has increased by only 42%. Debt is rising disproportionately higher and faster than the amount of money we have, which means the general population's ability to pay down that debt is diminishing as time goes on. And if you're curious where all of this money is going, it's going to about where you would expect. As you can see here, uh, this is an article that AP did about what people are spending debt on. Think about a consumer that makes $50,000 a year, says John Green, Discover's chief financial officer at an investor conference in December. When inflation outpaces your wage growth, they're making decisions in terms of what they're going to spend, what bill they're going to pay, and what they're going to, frankly, put on their table. Inflation peaked at 9.1% in June of 2022 and is now slightly above three. It's actually a little higher than that at 3.2%. And then uh, a different, more accurate indicator of it, I believe, put the estimation at 3.8%, which is still higher than any predictions and also is concerning because the Fed is now not really sure what to do with interest rates because of that. But the cost of many goods and services remains elevated. A loaf of bread that cost $1.54 in December 2020 cost $2.02 at the end of last year. And a gallon of gas has risen from an average of $2.17 to $3.29 in the same time frame, according to the 
Bureau of Labor Statistics, and this is the most important and devastating one. Renters in particular have felt the pinch. The median rent for a property with up to two bedrooms has jumped from $1,424 at the end of 2022 to $1,713 at the end of last year, according to Realtor.com. That's roughly 20% with like some back of the napkin math. Probably your wages have not gone up 20% since 2020. Basically, as life gets more expensive, disproportionately fast to the rate that wages are increasing, people are putting it on credit cards, and that's causing a problem. Now, this is a worrying trend. At the moment, it is just a trend, but it could get pretty significantly bad. So two things have to happen. The first is that legislators need to take legal responsibility. There have to be laws in place that prevent companies like Visa and MasterCard from taking advantage of people who either don't read contracts or are financially irresponsible and locking them into high, high interest rates on their credit cards, leading them into a cycle of debt and financially being crippled. And the second thing that needs to happen is we need people to take their financial lives into their own hands. They need to do things like eat out less, buy cheaper food and cook it at home, buy more affordable used cards and not either take out uh, no car payment or very, very low car payments, go on fewer vacations, don't buy as large of a house or downgrade your apartment or so on and so forth. Any number of things to spend less money so that you're able to get out of a cycle of debt. And every time I say that consumers have to consume less or do fewer fun things like going out or going on vacation, I always get people in the comments upset at me saying that it shouldn't be that way and these big companies are taking all the money and it's leaving lower and middle class people crippled. And I absolutely agree with that. It shouldn't be that way. But I also can't deal with how things should be. You have to deal with how things are. And how things are right now today are that people need to make sacrifices so that they don't get locked into a cycle of debt and are forced into bankruptcy or even worse, something like homelessness. It sucks, and I'm sorry, but making a bad situation worse by continuing to take out more and more credit card debt and continuing to pay really high interest rates is a horrible idea and will only serve to make this bad situation even worse for you in the future. So please do what you can to help yourself out until we can get some common sense laws in place that will help everyone out. Thanks for watching.